Test. Hmm. Should be online now. Can anyone hear this? Probably not. Um. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cool. Thanks, Craig. What's up? Um. Cool. I had a few issues uh, starting starting the stream. I was actually connected to another account, so uh, I was streaming on uh, <laughs> another account. It's kind of funny. Um. All right. I'm not sure if I should wait for the people or just get going. I'm gonna open up a few windows just in case. Um. Ba -ba -bum. Boom. Gonna need this. Yep. <clears throat> I don't know how this is gonna turn out, but uh, you know, it's gonna be fun. Even if I crash and burn, it's gonna be a good experience. But hey, you know, that's how it is. What else do I need? Um, open up. Uh, Phillies documentation. Boom. And uh, yeah, basically I'm gonna start with that. So I'm just gonna wait a few minutes just to see if there's other people. But to be honest, I don't think there's gonna be many people. But you know, it's gonna be fun either way. Probably should increase the font on this. Boom. So how's it going, uh, Craig? Talking to one person, it's kind of fun. Thanks for being here. I think it's gonna be pretty fun once I get going. Also, I was wondering if uh, I should be starting with the UI or uh, I think I'm just gonna start with the, uh, the logic itself and the types. I think that's gonna be more enjoyable at first. So I don't think I'm gonna be uh, doing the UI first, but you know, you know, for now, I'll just do like the dumb stuff or the uh, simple stuff. So, I'll do a new repo on GitHub, I guess. So, I'll do that uh, off camera just because of the security stuff repositories. Well, I think I can start here uh, just like that. So, new. So, this is going to be. Cool, man. Glad you're enjoying the videos. Um, yeah, it's kind of funny. Like, I think the people who watch the Stonkwatch videos really like it, but um, I feel it's very hard to get into it. And so, um, I was just thinking of other ways. Maybe, uh, maybe I shouldn't be this doing this like crazy long uh, video series. Maybe I should just keep focusing on individual videos. And, um, and stuff like that. So that's been on my mind. But if I stream it, maybe it'll be less boring, you know, or it can, like, someone can just tune in and check it out. So I've been thinking a lot about that, I don't know. So response, uh, repository can be just like, uh, poker, Phillies poker, something like that. Phillies.poker, just make it sound like a library, live. I'll just do nothing for now. Cool, so now I can just use this, and um, what I'll be doing is in source tree. I'll be creating a new repo so I can clone this. I'm not sure if you can see this, but uh, do that. So I'll select the library off, off screen, just like that. Da -da -da. Make a new folder. Yeah, it's gonna be kind of interesting, this streaming thing. I think it can kind of be fun, but, uh, you know, starting it, it's not gonna be uh, an easy task. I'm just gonna have to get used to it. Uh, I'll do poker.
Yeah, I agree with that. I think uh, no one wants to see another to do app ever. <laughs> if I have to see another to do app, well, actually, we'll have to see one because we're going to be uh, starting off with the safe stack template and it starts out with the to do app, but uh, you know, it's all good. Um, so, yeah, I think how I'm going to do this is I'm going to start from the safe stack template and I think I'm going to be focusing on the types and stuff first. So I'll just like do the, the actual poker logic, all that. And then once we're done like writing all the tests and we know like the things work, then we'll do a UI. Uh, that might even be another stream though, because uh, I haven't thought about this, but you know, it, it kind of takes time um, writing the code and stuff. When I make the videos, you know, it's, uh, you know, I start writing and sometimes, you know, I take breaks or sometimes, you know, I, I have to look up stuff and that, that's, that stuff's kind of edited out, obviously, because I don't want to put people to sleep. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It's going to be a fun experience, so. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my folder now. Boom. Uh, yeah, like that. So I have like a workspace, workspaces folder if I have, have uh, all my like repositories and projects and stuff. So if I open this up in PowerShell... I have a little PowerShell window here. Yeah, I'll be fine. Thanks, man, for the encouragement. Much needed at this point. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, um, not a very uh, nervous person, but uh, camera shyness is a real thing. Uh, this is kind of funny when I was starting to do the videos. Anyway. Um, so... What I'm going to do is I'm going to do .NET new, save template. I actually copied this from uh, one of my video descriptions. So the video itself is, uh, let me pull it up. It's the getting started video. So here, I have the getting started video for all the things. So I just copied this thing here. Boom. And if I go ahead and do this, it's going to go to template. So this actually comes with Phillies built in. And it comes with a to-do app, to do app, so. I think I already had it installed, by the way, but uh, I was just doing it for the sake of uh, completeness. You only have to do it once. So I'm just looking at the short names. I should have one that's safe. So that's version three beta. That's what we want. So, uh, now we can actually, uh, wait, where's everything? Oh, I only installed the template, Never mind. So now I can just do dot net new save. Cool, so this is created. Boom, I have an SNL which doesn't tell me. Uh, I just reinstalled a new version of uh, Rider. So that's probably why it's kind of bugging out. If I do open with 2021. Trust and open. Boom. So I'm yeah, really excited for this new version of Rider to be honest. A lot of stuff uh, added with this. One sec, I should probably open up my stream up just just to see. I have the chat open, but I don't have the stream itself. Cool, everything seems fine. It's always nice to see. Um, cool. All right, so what we have here, and I can't zoom this part in, so that, that kind of sucks. I don't know how, how well you can see there. If I open up a file, I'll, uh, I'll zoom it in, but Ooh, and it kind of defaulted all my uh, thingies there. So that's kind of sucks, but uh, yeah. All right. So is this uh, zoomed up enough? That's probably fine. But uh, there, you can rarely have too much zoom in, I feel. Especially if you're watching it. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, this is fine. Cool. So... What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna write it out in a uh, in a file, and I'll just write unit tests as we go. But for now, just to see if it works, what we're gonna do is we're going to just hit 
.NET tool restore to get the tools. So now we have packet and fable, and then we can just do .NET run. And that should open up, or not should open up, it should uh, deliver the, it should start uh, NPM and stuff like that. So we can actually, uh, you know, build and check it in the browser and run it. So let's open up the browser here. Should take some time. All right, so by default, we get a nice to-do app. So uh, Craig, man, I'm thinking of going to uh, puke a little bit, but that's fine. So start to stream, add, boom. All right, cool. So we have this by default. Um, so we're good. Let's just go ahead and check in that. Just to, you know. And uh, it should come with a get ignore by default which is uh, here. So that's why we don't need the original one. And all of this should be fine. I don't even really have to check it. Everything is uh, handled by the git ignore. So this is the initial commit. Yeah, my authentication sucks with uh, um, GitHub, so I'll have to do it after stream because I have to uh, the what's it called the um, two-factor authentication. It works uh, not super well. You have to create like a personal access token, and I don't want to do it on stream, so I'll just uh, ignore it for now. Cool. Um. All right, so now we have this. Let's just uh, remove everything. We're not remove everything. Let's just uh, go into code and create a new file. That's called uh, poker, and we'll just start from there. Add. What is it doing? Add existing file. I want a file there. Source. So actually, we can start out scripting it. So we can get that rapid uh, test going. So let's do that. So let's do, uh, you know, poker and you call it a domain or something. So uh, it's nice to start with the scripting file. Uh, just because you can get that rapid testing and then migrate it over to normal source files. That's normally how I do it. So today what I wanted to do is I wanted to make a... Uh, so I'm not I'm not sure if everybody knows how to play poker basically. Uh, so I'll just do a, like a brief explanation. Basically, so the type of poker I'm going to be making, even though all the uh, most of the rules are the same uh, with the different variants of poker. In this case, we're just going to be playing five card draw, which is like the most classic way to play poker, but the most popular these days is Texas Hold'em. And I'm not going to do Texas Hold'em, even though we can always, like, do it later with the... Because it's going to say, you know, like, all games are going to have the same cards and uh, suits and stuff like that. Even the hands you can make in poker are the same in five-card draw or in, in Texas Hold'em. So that's fine. Basically, I have five cards. Uh, so, you have five cards. And with these cards, you can make a certain amount of hands. So let's open up... Uh, the kinds of hands you can make. So if I do uh, bah, 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 poker hands, like this. So uh, these are all the hands you can make in poker. Basically, I don't know if this is like too much explanation, but whatever. So real flush. Well, let's start at the bottom. So if you have no pairs, no. That, okay, never mind. Let's just start at the top. So. Uh, in order of most value and therefore rarity, uh, a royal flush is where you have ace to ten, all suited. So when it's suited, it means all the the suits are the same. And uh, so that's the best possible hand you can have in poker. 
Uh, it's really good, obviously. Uh, very, very rare. Next is a straight flush. So this is a straight. If all the cards follow each other, it's a straight. If all the suits are the same, it's a flush. And it's royal if all if, if it's specifically ace to ten. Other than that, a straight is just a straight. So nine through five, all these numbers follow each other. And it's a flush because all the suits are the same. The next best hand you can have is four of a kind. So it's four times the same card. So in this case, they're all aces. The, the suits don't matter, so that's the next best kind. Full house is you have a set of three and a pair. Any set of three and any pair will make a full house. A flush is all the suits are the same. A straight is, as I explained earlier, three of a kind is uh, three of the same uh, card value. And two pair is two pairs in your hand. Then it's one pair, and then it's high card, which is basically nothing. It's just your hand is the best high card you have. So there's kind of a hierarchy of the best hands you can have. Uh, I'm sure, like, I think most people know how to play poker, but uh, I'm not sure. So just took some time to explain it. And yeah, so what I'm going to be doing is, firstly, I'm just going to write out domain, like what's a card, what's a suit, all those things. And determining based on five cards that you have, what um, what hand do you have? So given five cards, what is your, your hand? So do you have two pair? Do you have a high card and stuff like that? So yeah, let's let's go do that. And so I have five cards and I want to get what's the... Uh, so there's, I'm not sure how you can call this a hand ranking. What's your hand? A poker hand, maybe? Yeah, let's do a poker hand. And I want to get a poker hand. What's the, what's the poker hand that you have? So, we can just start defining all these types. So, type. And I, I like to start by the, how can I say this? And by the way, if you have any questions, you can just, uh, you know, write them in the chat. I'll read them, obviously. There's like seven people watching, so I'm just going to read the chat. Um, so what I wanted to say is, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I like to define what's my high level function and then go down from there. That's kind of how I like to modelize my things. So basically a, so a poker hand uh, solver or yeah, let's just do solver now is basically a function that will take a uh, five cards. So a five, yeah, five cards, and then we'll get a poker hand out of it, right? So that's basically what I want. So let's define each of these. So what's five cards? Five cards is going to be five cards. And uh, it's going to have of a card list, probably. So that's just what I'm thinking out of the top of my head. And since I have a new version of Rider, this syntax, this uh, syntax highlighting, I, I haven't like configured it as well, so it's going to look kind of odd to me, probably to you, but we'll see. And what's a card? So a card is so there's definitely a suit. So a card definitely has a suit. So a suit is a suit and we can probably define suit as well so a suit is um it can either be hearts it can be spades it can be diamonds and it can be clubs cool and uh so it has a suit and it has a value we should probably call it like a card value. So then one thing you can do is, you know, we can do a module card and put a type value here. 
Because I want to call it a live value, but uh, you know, you can also call it a card value. That's also one thing you can do. So that's probably just the simplest thing we can do is call it a card value. And there's multiple ways we can do this. Uh, we can literally just do ace oh, king. Why is it auto completing? I don't want it to. Queen. Jack. So that's one way we can do it. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and do that because they're discrete values. Uh, they're not like integers. Well, you can modelize it as an integer. You know, it doesn't really matter, to be honest. I'm just going to do it this way. Uh, 10, 9, Alright, so these are all the possible cards you can have. And one thing about this that's really nice is by default there is a structural equality. So let, let's give an example. If I have ace, I can do is it equal to 2? And I can actually run this since we're in interactive. So it's false, okay. Is ace bigger than 2? I can do that. That's also false. Uh, we can probably just... Uh... So that's true. So basically we should probably inverse all of these. So we can do 2 uh, and go down to ace so we can have it by default. So um, how can I do this? I can probably do this and just invert all of these. Okay, boom. And then that's going to be kind of long. I'll just I'll just do it manually. Seven. So an ace should be bigger than a 2 if I do it like that, and I rerun this. So this is true. And so that's going to be very good when we go to uh, determine uh, which is a better hand, like who wins between a poker hand and another poker hand, because this comparison uh, is automatically done with each type. And let's say if I have... A, an argument pass here, whatever, int. The comparison will automatically check the inner values of the constructor of the discriminated union by default. So that gives us a lot uh, for free. So that's great. Cool. Mm. Alright. So now we can come here and we can do it has a card value. And the card value is a, or I can call it value here. I don't have to specify card. And then the type is going to be card value. Cool. So I have my five cards here. And a list. So what's a poker hand? So here we can actually go ahead and define the result of that, but I'm going to do it later. To be honest, because I don't know exactly what each of the, uh, what's it called? Oh, we can do it now. So let's do it's a poker hand now. Poker hand. So the best hand should be defined last. So the worst hand should be defined first and the, the best hand should be defined last. So the best hand should be high card. And what high card will need so how do you represent a high card hand? 
you actually need all the cards. And you need them sorted. So that's one thing uh, that you need. So we can have of sorted five cards. And you don't really need the suits, but we can just include it, that's fine. So let's do it to type sorted five cards. And this will take sorted uh, five cards. So my type sorted five cards is a special kind of five card hand where it's all sorted. And all of these, all these constructors will have to be uh, private because I don't want to have fake, uh, I don't have to have false data. I really want the function that creates these types to be always correct. So I never have to worry about, oh, are these, is this card list in the, in the good order? So that's why I'm doing that very precisely. So the high card takes a sorted five cards. Um, a pair will take a pair of cards. So here is a good like argument that you don't really need a um, What's it called? You don't really need the suit here. You can just have the, the card value and then the rest of the cards. Because basically if you have two if you have two hands and they're both pairs, you have to look at the kickers. So the kickers are all the other cards in uh, in the hand. So let's say I have a pair of aces, or let's look at the example I had. Here I have a pair of aces. If two players have aces then you have to look at the next biggest card in the hand to see who is the winner. That's the kicker. And I have to represent that in my data. So a pair will be... So let's do a pair. What's a pair? The pair is... Is equal to... It has... So here I don't really care about, so that's the thing. Here I don't really care about the, the card values, the, the, sorry, the suits. So I don't really need the suits here. I'll, I'll include it, but if we want to be more correct, then we can just have another type that doesn't have the suits. But here I just want the uh, value of the pair, which is a card value. And I want the kickers, which is a card list. It's a sorted card list. So let's do sorted card list here. And the thing here, So, so the issue of having many of these types is you can start to see that maybe I want a card list to be, um, what's it called? So like having five cards is a characteristic and being sorted is another characteristic. And, uh, you know, we're not always going to have, how can I say this? It's kind of like composition a little bit where, hmm, like it, it's not entirely clear which should be, man, this is kind of difficult to explain. So I have a list of cards. If I want the cards to be sorted, uh, I want to specify a number of the cards. I want, you know, Maybe it's going to be a suited, sorted, five cards list. We have to make something that that can actually work. 
And so one can make the argument that I don't build on top of each of these types. Like, I don't necessarily want sorted five cards to take a five cards. Maybe I just want to take a card list to make it easier. And we can use uh, active patterns to just validate the whole thing. So let's do that. Because it's going to be a lot of overhead if I just keep building on top and I don't really know which to build first. So I know that's not going to be a very easy to understand. Probably should do a better job explaining, but... Uh, do, do you guys get it? The five people are watching. Um, if you have any questions, just uh, ask him. It's all good. Cool. So the kickers are going to be sorted cards. I don't really know how many kickers are going to be... Well, in this case, I know there's going to be three. Um, but I don't really need that information to represent that. So I can put pair here. So two pair is the next one. And it's going to be um, much like pair. It's going to have two card values. The first pair, the second pair. And the remaining kicker card. So we can do... A two pair is highest value is a card value. Then the next one is the lowest value pair. It's going to be card value. And then the kicker is just going to be one card. It can be a card value. We don't really need to suit. You can come here and do it there. Cool. So the next thing is three of a kind. If I recall. I should recall. I play poker often. Three of a kind. And of, it's going to be, I'm just going to make a type for each of these basically. Three of a kind. So it's going to have a value, card value, and then it's going to have kickers, much like the pair. So it's going to be sorted cards. Boom. Perfect. And... After that, it's going to be a straight, I believe. Yep. So a straight is uh, sorted cards, sorted five cards would probably be the thing. Yep. So I can just grab sorted five cards here, which will give me the straight. And um, what's it called? What's the next one? It's a flush. So a flush is going to be suited cards. So type suited cards or suited five cards. Yeah, it's going to be suited five cards of card list. You can grab that type. And the next one is going to be a full house. Yes. I don't even know why I'm checking, to be honest, but I'm just, I'm just making sure. Uh, full house. So what's a full house? It's going to be the three of a kind. It's going to have a card value, and then the pair is going to have another card value. Cool. And then we have four of a kind. Of. 
four of a kind. So the value is going to be a card value and it's going to have a kicker, which probably will never apply, but uh, we'll just include it for the sake of completeness. Cool. And then the last one, or the second last one, is the straight flush. So a straight flush of. Here we can just literally do, uh, or we could call it <laughs> suited sorted five cards, I guess. Uh, or sorted suited five cards. Cool, and then I have Royal Flush of um, it's a suited sorted five cards, so it's actually going to be the same type. It's a specific type of uh, straight flush. Cool. So all this should compile, there's absolutely no logic, but, um, you know, we're getting somewhere. Great, so, we should probably go ahead and implement this function, and that's, yeah, that's what we're going to do. So, let solver, and if I want to be, um, if I want to use the actual type uh, here, I can do let solver is equal to a poker hand solver. And that's going to be equal. And then you do an inner function here. So function cards. Boom, like that. If you want to have a hard type. So here the intelligence is picking up its five cards that so will turn your poker hand. Otherwise, you can just do cards and then put whatever here. Um, but you can't, like, uh, you won't apply. So this function can be a type of poker hand solver but you can't add the type annotation. So that's kind of the advantage of doing it this way. Just that's if you want to have the annotation there, which you don't really need to, but uh, you know, it's nice to have. Take a sip of water. So if there's any questions so far, just hit me up. So, the way we want to check this is we probably want to check if, uh, whoop, uh, what did I do there? Okay. So we probably want to check in order of the best hand, which one do you have? That's probably the, the best strategy. And a lot of these are going to overlap. So we'll have to have a uh, lazy initialization, I believe. But let's go ahead and do it. So I think a good way to doing this is to use active patterns. And I know I didn't do active patterns on my channel yet. But maybe be a maybe it would be a good time to do that. So let's go ahead and do that. So active patterns. Let's do uh let's do because there's multiple ways so let's actually explain what it is. So basically you can have match expressions, right? So uh match uh a list of cards, I guess, with and then you can do like, you know, this. So this is for a list. You can uh, do whatever with a list and then you can check if it's empty. So these are patterns, right? And for the list, there's two kinds of patterns. There's 
uh, the this is the head and tail, basically. So this is the head of the list, and this is the tail of the list, and this represents an empty list. So if there's an item in the list, it will hit this uh, branch here, and if not, it will hit this branch. All right. So these are patterns, and basically in F# -sharp you can make new patterns. So a pattern can be defined like this. So if I want to do it for list, it can do a uh, head and pass a list here. Or actually I can't do head, I have to do a tail because there's always going to be a tail. So this is a, uh, an instance where, so if I define it like this, this means it's a pattern that will always be correct. So in F-sharp, there are patterns that are sometimes correct, and there are patterns that are always correct. This, uh, So the underscore is a case that it's always correct. This will always be true, much like if you do this. So this will only put this value into a, a variable, or assign it to a name. It's called x. Then you can use x here. Right. And if a pattern... So this is a case where a pattern does not always pass, right? So let's start with tail. If I want to create a, a pattern or an active pattern that's called tail, I can do list.tail and grab uh, pass a list to it. So this will take an A list, return an A list. And what I'll, what I'll do is let's say I have match one uh, 1 to 3, let's say, or 1 to 10, whatever, with, then I can actually use my pattern here, tail, and, oh, actually, I didn't do that correctly, I have to actually construct the, uh, yeah, and active patterns don't really work well with the, the pipe operator, so I can just do this, I believe, or maybe I'll do uh, parentheses, Right. Okay. So what I just do here, and then just comment this first. All right. So I define an active pattern, which is much like a function. So actually, I can I can actually call this like a function. I can do if I have a list ten here. And I pass it to tail. This can actually compile. And the result is actually the tail of the list. So all elements except the first one. And it can be called like a function. But the beauty of this is I can use it like a pattern. So here I can match this expression with tail. And if it succeeds, which in this case always does because there's no, uh, it, it doesn't return an option. I'll have access to this, so this can compile, and it'll give me the same thing. So this is a kind of a way of creating new patterns. Um, so that's great. And we can use these patterns in, uh, in our context to determine whether, or to create, what I should say, uh, different things. So when we use a pattern like this, it's much like a function. We grab data in and then we return a, a like another either most of the time it's used to it can use it can be used like a getter. Um, in other times it's used like in the case of I have a data point that was in uh, imperial values. I can convert them to metric values. That's like one way to do things. Uh, but you'd probably use a uh, units of measure for that. So that's probably another example. Another example, if you have a vector that has two, like two coordinates, X and Y, you can probably convert them to a, uh, what's the other notation where you have the, the normal vector and then the angle to get the, the yeah, that's a, like another way to represent a vector. And so it's kind of very practical for that. And in the other case, 
I can have active patterns that don't always pass. And in this case, let's do head. Or I should probably just do another... Here. Okay. And... Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, so head. Uh, it can fail. So the pattern will not always hit. And basically what I can do is I can just do head and then do head here. It's kind of a boring example. So head is actually... Um, this should actually... I want to do try head to get an option. Or actually, I, f I think I have to return... Uh, yeah, I have to do some. So I can do list. Or I can do list. List.tryhead. So this will return an option. And then I can do uh, list.map head. And I'm not sure if this is going to work. Yeah, I can probably do head like this. No, I, I can't. I, I really have to do uh, so x option B D this. Yeah, yeah, I always forget which one is it. I don't know if I should return a an option of. So if I do this try head and then I pass it to. Just return an option. I, I always forget this bit. Can I? Okay, does this work? Let's just check. Whatever. Let's just try this. Yeah. Okay. So I return head, but I give it an option. I always forget if it's... Uh, I return an option of head, but that doesn't really make sense once I think about it. So... Head will return an option. It can be some value or none. And like... So in this case, it, it tells me that it's an incomplete match because this does not always succeed. But if I do tail, since it always succeeds, uh, all the cases are fulfilled. Yeah, well, I don't need to... Oh, I did... Did I do list.map? Okay, that's probably why it failed. Rip. Uh, that explains. I... Right, good tip. That's the kind of thing of doing it live, is you kind of look like an idiot sometimes. Um, boom. So, if it's anything else... Then you know, obviously, I'm not gonna do it like this in real life. But uh, if I just do empty list, yeah, it'll do minus one. So these are the kind of options. So we're gonna be using these kinds of active patterns in our like determining what kind of hand we have. But we're also gonna use this. So this could be a good active pattern to uh, create sorted hands, basically. So one can argue, one can argue that uh, I shouldn't even construct these types of types because I can use active patterns. But we're gonna go with the flow and check it out. Cool. Thanks for the tip, uh, Craig. See, streaming programming is kind of like uh, pair programming, mob programming. Does this sound fine, by the way? Like my voice, the music. Cool. 
Alright. So. Uh, the first thing we want to check here. Is. If it's suited. So this is going to be actually very interesting to do. Let's do... Sorry. Suited. So let's check if a hand is suited. And let's do uh, five cards. So this is going to be cards. And the type is going to be five. Oh. I can deconstruct this. Five cards. So I just don't have to be annoyed with the card. Actually, I don't really care how many cards there are. I just want to list the cards. So let's just do cards. And there's a new refactoring to remove unnecessary parentheses. That's kind of fun. And if we want to check if cards are suited, basically we want to check list for all. Yeah. So for all, I want to check if fun card. Whoop. Or actually, what I want to do is. There's many ways I can do this. I can do. Hmm. So I can map. I can do cards.map get the suit. Alright, so now we have a suit. And I want to check if they're all the same. So, I'm kind of thinking like, which one should I do? I can do if they're all equal to the first one, I guess, but, uh, you know, it's not as, not as fun. I can fold. I can do filter, no. Alright, so that's how we're gonna do it because I'm kind of annoyed by now. So I can do, so these are all suited. Let suits, and I can do. I, I I was thinking like the best way. I'll just do like the first way I was thinking about is uh, let uh, maybe first suit is equal to suits. This uh, try head. So here's the thing. Here's where it gets handy to just give it a five cards like that. I'll know that I have uh, that I, I have at least one. I know I have at least one because I'll never construct this 
uh, where there's no five cards. So here I can just go list that. Uh, list that map is fine. I should do. Yeah, I won't need uh, that. So some or no. So list that map, and I can do list dot for all, and I can do uh, is equal to cards dot list get head. Oh, it's not cards. It's uh oh, I have to do a suit. So I'm going to have to put it let suits, and so. I want to return suited. Suits that for all. So this works. I'm not sure if it's the best way to do it. So basically I'm checking if all the cards have the same suit as the first card. Which is fine. Um, I'm sure there's a function somewhere that will check if all the values of the list are, are equal to each other. But whatever. So this is, this returns true or false. And so I can just do uh, let all suited. And then I can do if all suited, then do sum uh, cards. Or I should do. And I can just bring this out, I guess. Or just do it like that. Cool. So this returns a card option, card list option. That's good. So let's test this out. Um. If you want to test it out, let's do let five cards. And then let's just uh, do uh, creating cards is going to be kind of long. So let card is equal to suit his hearts and value is ace so let's just copy a few of these do a uh, ace of hearts let's do Two of spades. Mm. Let's do three of spades. Let's just keep doing six. And 
We need the last one. Let's do King of Diamonds. Cool. So let's do high card. Let high card is equal to all of these basically in no particular order. That one already to that one. Just do five cards. And I should probably pass this to five cards. So basically, I want to start constructing these. So I'll do a constructor for the five cards. Or I mean, the thing I could do is uh, I can do an active pattern. Now nah, uh, it doesn't really make sense to do an active pattern. Let's just do a constructor for it. So do module five cards. Well, we can do let from cards. And then do cards is equal to if list dot length. And I'll probably hard type this. I don't want it to be generic. Card list is list length. So cards passed into list length is equal to five. Then do some so let's do cards yes pass into five cards and I want to do some else And ideally I bring this type in here. An argument can't be made to put in another file. For now, I'm not going to bother from that very much or bother with that. I can do private though. Yeah, let's do that. This will break. Yeah. Thing is, I'm in a scripting environment, so. Mm -mm. Let's just do another file and do types, you know, basic types. Hmm, should I? Yeah, because it's still visible. Yeah, here I can't do this anymore. But I can always do an active pattern to get it. I can expose the active pattern, so let's do that. So 
this should work. And maybe I don't need to do this. Yeah, I do. Cool. So basically what I did there is I put the constructor of this type behind a module. So only, only the people in the module can uh, construct one of these. So it kind of guarantees that there's no going to be funny business creating uh, lists of cards that aren't five of link five. F sharp, what? I don't even come on brain work. Um, hello. What's up? Uh, bum, bum, bum. Where was I? Cool. So here I need to create So what I can do is I can actually move this to the module for now. Just to not be annoyed with the option. Oh, obviously I need to create these types beforehand or these values beforehand. Cool. Boom. So what was I doing earlier? I totally forgot where I was, but let's just go from back to it. So I basically created uh, five cards by default. So I'll just call it test data. If I go back to my salt, so I did suited. I just did suited. That's good. The next active pattern I want is I want to check if cards are are sorted. And I want to check them if they're sorted. Um, so there's two two reasons why I want to sort the cards. The first reason why I want to sort the cards is, or at least I want to check if the cards are in a sorted order. Okay, no. I always want to sort the cards because if I want to check for a straight, I need to make sure the, the cards are sorted and that each of the cards follow, or how can I say? I just want to make sure it's nine, eight, seven, six, five. Man, I'm lost with all the modern programming languages I don't even know about. Yeah, not not a lot of people know about F sharp uh, in general, but it's a it's a statically typed uh, program, programming language on .NET. I think you wanted the hand to test the patterns. Oh, yeah, you're right. That's exactly what I wanted to do. Cool. Thanks for reminding me. But yeah. Uh, you can check out my YouTube if you want to know what about F Sharp. Uh, and I'm doing these live streams to like kind of expose it. And uh, not a lot of people know about it. But to be honest, it's it's kind of very stable and mature. It's not this like random language. It's on .NET. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a functional functional programming language on .NET. Statically typed with uh, type inference. So uh, it's it's quite quite cool. But yeah, it might look like. Well, th this is kind of kind of easy to understand, kind of, or not easy, but it doesn't look confusing. This might look more confusing to you. Well, like, what the hell is this? You know. Um. But if you want a quick rundown, I mean, I can do that. Um, but yeah, this, you're not going to understand this. This, we're basically deconstruct, man. <laughs> there, there's so many things I have to explain before I get here. Uh, you know. Basically, you know, if you want the basics, these are types. It looks like an enum, but it's a discriminated union. It's, basically you can think of this as an abstract class. And these are all like concrete implementations. So it's kind of a choice type. This is an aggregate type. It's called a, a record. So if you've ever done C sharp, then it's kind of like, this is a value, this is a value, and the type holds two values. I'm constructing instances of it here. And, you know, I have this pipe operator. You know, I don't want to go to run now, but I have like a, like a lot of videos on YouTube if you want to check it out um, in my description. But yeah, 
Now you can keep on trucking for now. But you might be able to understand a lot of things, but just like this, I just explained it a, a bit, like, a few minutes ago, what it was. It's an active pattern. But yeah, if I want to test out this active pattern, I can do, um... Match, I think it's called 5cards.testData, I think. Yeah. With... So I'll just run everything to be honest. So it's false, that's correct. If I change all of these temporarily, or I have spades, let's do more spades. Let's do, um, let king of spades. You stopped at uh, C sharp, uh, C C plus plus. Yeah, you don't need to know C sharp to do F sharp. It's based on the same uh, runtime, which is .NET, and it definitely helps if you know C sharp before doing F sharp. But it's not necessary. Actually, you can argue if you have no knowledge of object-oriented programming, uh, it might be even better to start learning functional uh, programming. Because you kind of have to unlearn a lot of things to learn the functional paradigm, I feel. That's kind of like the biggest thing is... Um, well, I, you know, I kind of disagree with that too. Because I think you should learn everything. And, you know, just be able to think about what you're doing and what are the pros and cons. What are the advantages of having objects. And what are the, the disadvantages of functional programming. Because there's definitely disadvantages, especially for like, you know, high performance stuff, you want to be able to do some mutation, which you can with F sharp. That's kind of, it's like the Goldilocks language a little bit because you can do most of, most of the things functionally, like in a functional, pure, testable way. But those high performance scenarios, you can always do mutable data and uh, yeah, doing like some more unsafe stuff. Yeah. Base class library is definitely important. I don't want to unlearn anything. Yeah, that's fine. In the retro scene. I don't know if retro you mean older stuff. Um, but yeah, let's do like a nine. Okay. So you're like a 90s developer. <laughs> it's kind of insane now. When I'm working with people and they've been writing code since I was born. It's kind of crazy to think about. More like 80s, damn. She. Yep, that's, that's not in my camp. Um, cool. So if I uh, do another test hand, let's just uh, pseudo data. And then I do king and the nine. I think I screwed up there. Oh, that doesn't exist. King of spades should. Spades. Oh, I put kind. Okay. Commodore 64, yeah. Different ballpark. Yeah, that's kind of the quite contrast people these days who start learning programming and 
It's like Node.js web technologies, like at 50 feet above the the computer. Um, yeah, it's kind of the thing I was talking about or thinking about is uh, when I do like the videos on YouTube and I like show people how to program F Sharp. I'm thinking like if someone wants to be a really good developer, they should learn like a little bit of everything before they settle somewhere. Well, I mean, you know, one can argue you should never settle, but so if I do a uh, pseudo data, pseudo cards. True, that's good. So that seems to be working for now. So you can actually do a function here. So test data is false and this one's true. Just gonna assume that works for now. Yeah, breath first. Uh, yeah, definitely. Like a hundred percent. I when I learned how to program, so I went like in a in a program that was like internships and stuff. I I took like five different internships with five different companies and like five different things, and I saw a lot of people going back to the same company. Stuff like that, and it felt like that wasn't really a. Well, I'm not gonna say it wasn't. A, there's like pros and cons and stuff, but if you want to work and stuff, uh, you know, it's definitely not optimal. And I didn't mute Slack, but whatever. Cool. I know assembly, blah blah blah, basic, a lot of dialects. Yeah. And you can probably hear that notification. I should probably turn that off. Turn off all notifications. Boom. All right. Yeah. Different worlds, man. Different worlds. Cool. So now we have this active pattern for suited cards. We can do an active pattern for uh, straight cards. So straight cards are... Uh, well, firstly, what we want to do is probably get an active pattern to sort the cards. So like I said, this is one type of active pattern where which can fail. We can probably do another active pattern which can't fail and just sorts the cards. So let's do that. And let's do uh, five cards again. Well, this one genuinely we don't really care. We really don't care how many cards there are. So let's do a, let's just do a card list. And to be honest, sorted can take whatever. We don't really care. Sort by, or let's just do sort. Let's see, let's see what get what it gives us. So I do sorted. So if I do. Um, whatever, I can do test data. It's kind of a weird way of writing it, but it should be fine. Oh, I have to do five, five cards with test data. And probably have to do this. Oh yeah, um, so I have to deconstruct this. Oh, and I can actually do something cool here. 
I can do so these are uh, this is a card list but I can do five cards dot five cards and this can actually work so what I'm actually doing here is I'm deconstructing this five card object with this active pattern and this active pattern should give me a card list and I'm doing a pattern match on the card list to obtain these sorted cards. So here I should actually get the sorted cards and I should probably define this. So I'm getting ace, two, three, six, king. This isn't sorted. Where did I put the ace? Ace king, yeah. Oh, see, it's sorting the suits, probably. So here, I don't want these suits to be compared at all. I just want, I want all suits to be equal. And I kind of like always forget like custom comparison. Uh, I, to be honest, I have to Google this. I, I forget every time how to define it. So F sharp comparison. Custom quality, custom comparison. And you have to, I think you have to override. I'm not sure you have to override everything. to compare, compare. Let's just do custom equality, custom comparison and see what happens. And will it tell me to... You have to have object equals, equitable, Okay, so override um, this dot equals no override with uh, I'm not sure just checking no it's just straight up override x dot equals obj. And if basically I want this to be true if uh, they are both hearts, basically. So if I do match X and obj with um, And I don't have any intelligence. I, I think I can call a... Yeah, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a... Member... X dot equal... And then I can do... Thing, but I can uh, specify the type. Which is... A suit. I don't actually have to do custom. I think I just have to do comparison. Let's just wait. Let's just redo this. This type uses invalid mix of attributes, no equality, reference quality, structural equality, no comparison, probably. Or structural comparison. It's like we'll get it figured out. Let's try structural equality. OK. 
Okay, let's test it out. Is hearts equal to hearts? True. Is uh, hearts better than spades? It should be false. Is the opposite false as well? Nope. Okay. They should all be equal, right? So I'll do no, I'll do custom. Screw it. And I'll just do whatever it tells me. I'll do whatever it tells you may. Or or okay. So object dot equals object. I'll I'll just do that again. So I just have to make sure that both of these are are the same type. So match x and obj with or I don't have with here. I think it's just equal. Yeah. And if I do I think I know this one's a suit. Or, hmm. I don't think this is going to work. But yeah, I don't think this is going to work at all. Nah. Um, man, I cast so rarely. Sort by C value. Um, yeah, you can do that. That's when you think you can do. I just wanted to set it so uh, it ignores the suit, basically. So I have to do the uh, different type of cast. I can't just do uh, this cast. So match this. Yeah, this is what I want to do, but if it's a tuple... Uh, I haven't done it with uh, a tuple. That is actually exactly what I wanted to do initially. But for now, for sure, we can do a... Uh, this sort by... If we have a lot of types that look together, we probably have to specify it often. Is this interpreting it as... Why is it interpreted as four of a kind? Because of this? Yeah. Fine. Yeah, I, I thought I tried that. Uh, Italia. Oh. Uh, 
Uh, do match. Hmm. Seems to work as... Left and right. Yeah, I don't think it works. Or maybe it does. Interesting. Let's just cast Obj because X is a uh, X is a suit. So if it's a suit, yeah, I, that that was kind of dumb then. As other, then. And if I can override the the quality compare. I can just set it to always uh, the same thingy, um, or I can do, oh my god, like I, I hope I don't have to do like match um, other with x and do like hearts hearts. I'm sure there's a better way to do it, but screw it at this point. I'm sure I did this before, and there's a much better way to do it. I'll uh, I'll have to check it out. This looks so ugly, but uh, you know. Okay, I have to implement comparable. And what's the uh, method on this? I forgot. I can probably just do uh, equal with this. So I always want to give it the same uh, value just uh, in comparison. So I can probably remove what I did here. That should still work. Let's try it with it and then uh, deal with it after. This is the actual thing I wanted. but. Uh, All right, suit. Yeah, it wants me to do hash code. I'm sure I don't have to do this, man. Uh, what's the contract on that? It's uh, just have to check it again. Does it take? Yeah, it takes nothing. And then, uh, I'll just do like, if it's hearts, it's zero, one, two, or whatever. It doesn't really have to be unique, I don't feel. So, 
Let's just be thankful we always get uh, the default ones uh, free, you know? Don't have to do all this uh, hash code stuff. I remember I had to do like... It, and when you do like uh, C sharp, if you want your objects to be equal on based on whatever, you have to implement these. In F sharp, it's the opposite. You have to... I don't know F sharp. Can't you say set each suit to have the same value of one? Yeah, I can do it if I do another function. I can do it on my own. If I want to use the built-in uh, interfaces, I have to do it this way. And what what it gives me to do with built-in, so that's actually a good point. Um, if I don't want, because the thing that this allows me is here I can just do sort. And retrospectively, it, uh, it doesn't feel like a fair trade, to be honest. But uh, if I do sort it here, and I just do everything, uh, let's comment this stuff out one sec. If I just evaluate everything, now it does two, three, six, king, ace. So I want to uh, sword descending. Now it does ace, king, six, three, two. And I'm using the built-in uh, comparison and equality. So that's why I did it this way. Um, but it's a very fair argument, which I'm starting to realize uh, it's probably just worth it to well, this would be like the, the if you're using the normal comparison and equality structures that are offered by .NET. Um, that's kind of have to have, how how do you have to do it? I think the the, the thing that's annoying me is uh, I wanted to only override the the comparison, and I just feel there's probably a way to do it without having to override the equals. Oh, I could have just done structural equality here. Um, I'm an idiot. Why is it consider adding? No, see, I could I could have done it this way. I did all this for nothing. Gives me a warning though. I can probably ignore a warning with the thingy, but yeah. So this is actually what I want initially. I knew like uh, it wasn't so complicated, but anyway. Cool. So structural equality is the basic like equality that you'll have. So it's the member-wise checking uh, of each of the things underlying it, and the like normal equality like in C sharp is reference equality. So it checks the addresses. Is, is it the same instance at the same address in memory? So that's the difference between the two. Cool, and now I can just use this sort by descending thing. So if I come here, ace, king, six, three, two. So that's exactly what we wanted. Uh, cool. So sorry for that detour. It must have been uh, pretty sucky to watch, but uh, you know that's it's kind of how it is. You know, it's not uh, it's not always linear. Let's. So now I want to test out if a hand is a straight or not. So if it's a straight, and it might not be. Whoa. What I want to take in is a sorted Or I can take any cards, but it'd probably be best if I do uh, sort of, uh, taking a, a hand that is sorted. So I can just do this. Yeah, it's fine. Um, so if I have hands that are sorted, I want to make sure that the difference between each of the cards is only one. Right? That's kind of what I want to do. And so there's one way I can do it.
we can convert each of these to a number value. Would that be the best way to do it? Hmm. I want to check if there's a way um, to get the index of a discriminating union. Like by reflection. I can literally do an enum, I guess. If I do an enum, it could work. I'll keep searching though. There's definitely a way to do it by reflection here, if I do get union cases. But the thing is, is the ace can be a one or, a, or not a one. So that's the thing. It's, it's kind of, it's not, uh, it's pretty custom. But one way I can do it is I can specifically check that case, uh, which is called the wheel. So if I have um, an ace, two, three, four, five, this is called a wheel. So you can have a straight like this and you can have a straight like ace, king, queen, jack, 10. So this is called Broadway. Don't really have to know that, but whatever. And so I'm thinking maybe you can check this specific case, which is the only one that will apply with the ace. And we can check, uh, do it normally that way. So let's just do it normally and then implement that specific case, I feel. So let's do this. Let's do let union cases is equal to, oh, why did I do it there? F sharp type dot get, I think it's, uh, one sec, all right, there, get union cases. I probably need a namespace here, probably reflection. Does that work? And I probably need to give it the type, uh, it's card value. It's type of. So I get a union case info array. Oops, drop something, okay. And what I can do is I can probably create a map. So I can probably do like array dot map I don't know what the union case uh, info has uh, specifically but if I map I I can do function X I or is it the opposite no oh, it's I X or I value 
where you can literally create uh and just do that and then can you do like map dot of array so now I have a int to union case info ideally what I want is okay what do I have in the union case info name blah 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 I think I'm overthinking this. I, th I think I just should convert it to an enum. Enumeration. An ace should ideally be one, but let's do fourteen for now. Ooh, that kind of sucks though. All right, screw it. Let's do a. Let's just do a function that returns a card value. Yeah, let's just do that. Screw it. I don't want to. So let's control Z. Or one thing I can do, to be honest, is just uh. I can do module. Card value. And I can do let's get int value and uh, ideally I can get a list of all these to avoid manual labor but uh, I don't want to google too much so I'll just do uh, I'll just do it normally so if I do if I copy this and paste it here and do this, crap, okay, and do this, no, this is fine, boom, it's kind of a productivity tip I guess, and ideally this is an array, although it probably doesn't matter too much, and then so here are all my values. So let all values and then if I want to get the int value of a card value I can just um, do array dot get in probably get refined index index item no I want the index of good point I need to give it the other thing the uh, actual list doesn't seem like there's a curry definition so let's pass everything cool that was way longer than I wanted to but whatever And ideally, I do plus one here. Because, or plus two, I should say. It's zero based, and I want to start at two. You could just make a card value function to int. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. So, card value to int. And if I want to go back here, so my straight with my sorted cards. And if I do cards, so is this, this should be a card list. Yeah. 
So if I list that map and I convert uh, card value, I should probably put that one private. So now I have a list of integers that represents the value of a card. So what I can do is I can like fold right. There's probably a lot of ways to do it. I'm just thinking here. What's the way I want to do it? Because I, if I start at the end and I and I subtract the so here's what I'm thinking. So if I have like nine, eight, seven, six, five. If I start here, if I start at the end and I subtract this value, uh, if I subtract this value from this value, I should get a, and I do that to rec or like in a loop or something. I should get an array that is one, 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 right? So I think that's a fold right operation. Let's just try it out. Fold back, which is called an F sharp. So my folder will take a T in a state. So let's do the folder. Let folder. This is current. And then the accumulator. I think we just need to subtract the values of first and last element cards. No, we can't do that because uh, there can be like pairs and there can be gaps. So if there's a pair and a gap, then it, it, it just, that, that won't work. If you have four of a kind, if you have like four aces and a 10, that, that wouldn't work. So I really want to check that there's a gap of one between each of the cards. So let's say my accumulator is the last card. I can do, no, I can't do that. I have an idea. Let's do a tail recursion. Let's see. Let's see if we can do that. I'm sure there's a way to do it with fold. Yeah, I was going to do match cards with at this point and do it recursively. So if you do let... Uh, And you have, so I can always reverse the list of cards. 
to have uh, five. Ideally, I don't reverse like if we were like performance intensive, but at this point, I don't think we care very much. We can always do um, max access or, or like first, second, rest or tail, whatever. And just make sure that if uh, second minus first uh, is equal to one, then you can call this thing again. So let's do let inner cards is equal to, and this should be recursive. And call the inner function again with second on the top added to tail. And what should this return? We'll find out later. It should probably be a accumulator. And this is a Boolean to determine the result. Do if ack is equal to, or if accumulator or still is valid. If it's still valid, then check it. Else, then return still is valid. Uh, I could do that, but, uh, yeah, you said it yourself, it's ugly condition, you know, oh, that is, I guess this isn't pretty either, <laughs> to be honest, but, uh, you know, if I do second tail, Oh, I didn't. I don't even have to pass the uh, inner. I don't have to pass this. Yeah, I don't need an accumulator here. Okay, so it's already less bad. Okay, and in the case where there's no two elements left, there's just a last element or no element at all, it should be fine. I think this works. Let's test it out, shall we? Yeah, so basically running down this, um, I should I need to pass it. So if I do inner and I pass cards. So here, I, I, I call these cards both, but the, um, and then I have to do if it's true. So I'll call this if is straight. If it's straight, then do uh, straight some cards. Else, oh, cards no capital. Um, okay, we just have to remove this, okay, good. Cool. All right, so let's just run this down. So if these cards are straight, I want to get the first and second element, so here. Oh, and this is, wait. Um, I 
So they'll be passed like this. I wanted to do first minus second. Because I want the. Uh, they're going to be passed in uh, this format. So if the, the, the first minus the second one is equal to one, then I want to do it again, but remove the top part, the, the that part. So this should work. I wonder if there's a way to use like a base, uh, a base class library function to do this, but you know, we'll just do it this way. All right, so let's test this out. A straight. This won't work because I it doesn't always pass, so I have to do match. Or to be honest, I could just uh, bring this function out. Yeah. We can do let is, or yeah, just do this. And yeah, so this will only be an active pattern kind of way to integrate with it. So if it's straight, here is a int card list. I actually don't want that. So I'll, I'll create a exposing function. Yeah. So here, let is straight. I want to take a sorted, sorted cards. And here, this I can call it let inner. And here, I will call cards. We will map them to get the end value. Cool. And now I can actually do the call the inner function. Just could be a bool, that's good. Cool, cool. Now I can do five cards test data. And I can do I have to actually match this, I feel. Or I can just do is straight. And I have to make sure they're sorted first. So I can actually do this. I can just come here. And uh, I can do... Mm. Oh yeah, this always passes, so I'm fine. So this takes a card value list, or wait, it takes a card value list. Oh, I should probably uh, remove, I should probably take a... Yeah, I want to take a card list. So I can do let's, so let's do that. I want to take a card list, not a card value list. So I can do cards here. And here I can do Well, to be honest, I can actually do it like this if I wanted to. Because, like I said, this is a function. And, uh, you know, it has some syntactical... Syntaxical... It has some special syntax to uh, integrate with uh, pattern matches. So I have my list of cards. I convert them into a card list. That sort of, it, this doesn't help my thing for now. I have to do list.map. And 
and I probably have to do this again. True. Cool. Cool, this works. So it straight takes a card list. This takes a five cards. I'll just do this thing here. So cards. This should work. Man, that took a while. Yeah, I should probably do everything. So, false. That's good. That's what we want to see. Let's go to our test data and probably do some uh, a list of cards that is a straight. Two, three. We have six. So we're missing five and four. Or let's do of hearts. So let's do five of hearts. Cool. And we need the six. Cool. So if you do two, three, oh, I, I didn't need the six, I needed the four, crap. All right, if I do five of hearts, six, and then I pass four of diamonds. Oh, did I not do the correct thing? Yeah, crap, uh, this is straight cards so this should work all right let's pray Lol. cool and this doesn't shouldn't work false okay now there's a case that i talked about which is broadway so let's do that case first or sorry not broadway the wheel and that one we can do with a ugly condition uh like uh, joe's said Should probably commit at some point. Should also probably learn how to drink. Should be a, a good skill set to have. Um, so the wheel. What is the wheel? It is these straight cards. And instead of the six, I'll pass an ace. So this should be a straight. Cool. So it returns false, as expected. And we probably need to do a... Just a quick check before we do the inner function. So here, I can actually... Boom! Use a new feature in the new vers version of Rider and export a variable called... Uh, int list. So that's control RV. Or... Uh, int card value list, I guess. And if I do, I can do match int card value list with 
And if it's literally, um, and it's going to be sorted. So the ace is going to show up at the bottom. Now I understand my mistakes. There are four suits and we have four card for each value. We have four card for each value. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um. Yes, yeah, you're right. The ace is going to be at the top. It's not going to be at the bottom. So here I can literally just go, uh, or you know what? Instead of, I'll put this here. So it's not going to be valueless, it's going to be uh, sorted cards, card values. And I can match on my sorted card values, so match sorted card values with. And if it's ace, five, four, three, then that is a straight so we can return true and otherwise we're going to do this so this should make our situation pass true let's make sure so to be honest what we can do is we can make like little tests here which won't be like real assertions but um So like every time we have a test case, we can just like put it here and then we can re like run everything. So the first one says false, which is expected. Um, we can probably put not in front just to make sure uh, like we can have all trues and see if everything passes. Like, this isn't a really great way to do it, but if we're just, like, writing scripts and, you know, temporarily. If you don't want to lose all your test cases that you tried, it should be fine. So, this works fine. Um, so, yeah, that seems fine to me. So, now we have sorted and straights. So, we already have a lot, because now we can do royal flush. Or, actually, we can't do royal flush. We need uh, another one that's called Broadway. So we need to check if it's literally ace, king, queen, jack, ten to do the royal flush. So let's do that. So now we have suited, sorted. We have a straight. We can do Broadway. And it might fail. And what do we want here? We want uh, sorted cards again. And these cards are going to be, uh, it's going to be a card list. And what we want is, we're literally going to check if it's uh, ace, king, queen, whatever. So magic cards with, if it's ace, king, queen, 
Um, jack. Ten. If that's the case, then it's going to be a Broadway. Uh, we can just do unit to be honest. We don't really need anything. Or it has to be some, some something. Oh, we have to uh, get the values. To be honest, we, we've been doing this function a lot, so let's actually do a function for that. Well, that's nah, fine. It, it really doesn't optimize anything. It just optimizes one operation. We can do get value though. Get card value. What if cards are Ace King four three two? I don't know this game. Uh, Ace King four three two is Ace High. It's just a, t a high card. It's nothing. That's fine. Uh, yeah. So this trait that we're doing is we want uh, consecutive numbers. So Ace King Queen Jack ten or king queen jack 10 9 like stuff like that all the way through and there's one special case because the ace can be the highest card and it can be uh for straights and can be the lowest card so ace two three four five is a valid straight so that's why we're handling that special case on itself and so ace king four three two is not really anything so that's it mm. And then we want to map fun C. Yeah, so this works. Cool. And to test if it's uh, Broadway, we can just come here and do straight cards, five cards, and um, we can do is Broadway. Yeah, but let's do is Broadway just to help us out. Okay, and then we can come here and use it here. We need to pass the cards. Cool. And then we can come here and do it as Broadway. This should fail, or we should probably do everything. So this fails, that's great. So let's put a knot in front of it. Cool. Uh, you're welcome. Um, and let's do a Broadway uh, test data so we have king we have an ace we need a queen jack and a ten let's do a jack of oh, what did I do Uh, ten of spades. Um, let's do a jack of diamonds. And while we're at it, let's do a queen of diamonds too. Okay. And 
and we can build a list. So this is suited cards. If you want Broadway cards. Then we can do, so king. Let's do 10 of spades. Ace of hearts. Queen of diamonds and jack of diamonds. Cool. So I have Broadway cards. We can come here and do is Broadway with Broadway cards. Oh, we didn't define it. True, 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 true. That's good. So our implementation of Broadway cards work. I like to see that. So I'm just going to commit at this point. And from this point on, it's going to be really easy to do the rest. I feel. Not sure, but I feel. Cool. So let's actually start doing our solver. And we can actually add these here. Is suited, isn't that a thing? Let's export this. Or export this. And then it's here. Boom, card list, and then we can come back here and call it is suited. Then we can bring it here. Cool. So we can actually do the same thing here. And set call is suited. So this should be not. Unless, let's do test data, because I know test data is unsuited. And then we do suited cards. And we make sure it's suited. True, 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 true. Good. Does is straight work with four cards? Uh, yes, it. Not sure. Um. Uh, no, because we have this thing. But. In poker, you always have five cards. So one argument uh, that's kind of good on your part is I should probably make sure I'm not getting cardless. I should probably be getting five cards. Because originally, you're right, I was going for an algo that takes any number of cards. And uh, yeah, I didn't... Uh, uh, I didn't update that, so you're right on that. Good job. And here, I need to make sure they're sorted. This works.
And this no longer needs the pattern match. But it does need this. Oh. If you're wondering how I'm doing um, duplication of lines, it's control D. So Broadway is equal is straight plus first is ace. Um, Broadway is yeah, it's a straight that's ace high, as opposed to a straight being five high. Yeah, exactly. You don't need to call it Broadway. Broadway is not really a thing. It's just a term that people use. It's kind of like in poker, there's lots of surnames for hands. There's like uh, pocket rockets would be pocket aces. You have, uh, you know, the cowboys, uh, it's the uh, pocket kings um, and stuff like that. So it's not like an official term and this should not work. So that kind of works out. Cool. All right. I mean, you can compare some code by composition. Spare some code by composition. Um, oh, in that case, yeah. Um, Yes, I can. Yeah. You're right. So, I can take in a straight. Well, I don't know. It's kind of interesting. I actually would want... Uh, Yeah, I'll just keep it like this, because this is kind of simple, you know? Yeah, either way, either way, either way is fine. But yes, you're right. Um, what did I want to do? I wanted to... Uh, I think it's actually time to start writing this. So, I want to do something kind of funky. So if I match cards, I can actually maybe solve this with pattern matching. It's kind of doing, if it's Broadway and it's suited, Then it's a royal flush of what does this take? Sorted, yeah. We did a whole bunch of uh, types in the beginning. I'll just do a card list. Or for now, let, let's just ignore ignore this. Uh, no, actually, this one. Just for now, I just want to see uh, where the rabbit hole goes. So this should take, um, this takes a sorted, I want to take uh, five cards.
So, how does this all work, though? Is oh, because I do is Broadway. That's why. Okay, cool. So this is a royal flush. Then a straight flush is if it's straight and suited. Keep in mind, um, this might not be the most like performance optimization or uh, implementation because I like I'm I'm checking if it's suited m many times, you know. So you can definitely like optimize this a lot, but this is kind of fun doing pattern matching. You probably would never do this like that. Unless this is uh no, yeah, you would just not do that. You can probably make it work so you can memoize some data, but you know. This is a fun implementation. It's not a it's not a work implementation. <laughs> um but yeah, we should probably like we could have done with the uh, lazy initialization and stuff like that, so. So if it's straight and suited, and then the next one is four of a kind. So let's do that. You know what? I instead of doing true false, I can have just done uh, options. But yeah, that four of a kind. I take uh, five cards here. And I think I'll take this sorted as well. So basically I want to make a histogram or I want to make, so let's say I have ace, 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 two. Uh, I can make a function that takes a list and returns to me a four and two one. So like the occurrences of a card. And that's going to be very practical. Because I'm going to do this logic for full house, four of a kind, two of a kind, all these stuff, right? So let's write that function. Let's do occurrences. Get occurrences. So this is going to return a map. No. Going to return a card value int, and then this is going to be a list. Yeah. Okay. So I think there's a a function for this. I think it's like partition. No. Um. Count by. 
Oh, group by. Um, but I think count by is actually exactly what I want. So if I count by and I do id, which is the identity function. Yeah, I want to map list.map and I want to map it by the value of the card. Yeah. Occurrences. How do you spell that? Two R's? Okay. Cool. And uh, I can use this. So here, this is like one of the things. I'll do another implementation after. Promise. Maybe not. Maybe. Like this, do like a like an easy implementation, and then just do like with lazy initialization and stuff. It wouldn't be pattern matching, but. Um, Where was I? Where was I? Get occurrences. So now that I have uh, occurrences, and what I can do is I can actually define a type here, occurrences, which is equal to uh, occurrences of, and then this thing. Just so we can actually like document what it is, because this might not appeal or might not like, you know, make sense to a lot of people. Okay. So once I have the occurrences, I can check if I have a four of a kind, and I'm not sure how it's going to sort these. So if I want to make sure, I can just do a list.sort by descending and then uh, I don't care about the value, I just want the end and I make sure I sort with that. So what I'm saying is sort by descending, I'm sorting descending so the highest value is going to be first and I want the highest value of the occurrence to be first. And cool. So if I want to make sure it is four of a kind. I can actually just accept an occurrence object, record or union, whatever. And if I do list dot head, I'm pretty sure I'm never going to get an empty thingy. So occurrences. Let's dot head, and with the head one, I check if check if it's four, and if I check, uh, so fun number is number equal to four. Basically how you check if it's a four of a kind. Cool. But you have to give it the kickers, so this isn't uh this isn't everything that we want. So how do we get the kickers out of occurrences? Is the question. That's it. that's kind of simple. So let's get let's uh, 
get kickers. I think we're gonna pass it occurrences. So the kickers are all the can just replace. Yeah, you can do that. You're right. Forgot that nifty nifty function there. Good, uh, good find. Um, cool. So get kickers out of the occurrences. It's going to be all the card values that only have one, uh, one occurrence, because otherwise you're going to be pairs or trips or quads. So if I do occurrences, that filter, and I can check that second and you know I can I can be nifty here and do like this which would mean I check if the second value of the tuple which is the number of occurrences if it's equal to one then I'm just doing it point free so let's filter that so this gives me a list of card values and then with that I can uh, list that map because I only want the uh, first element, which is the cards. So I get a list of kickers here. And uh, now they are sorted by occurrence. I actually want them sorted by value. So I can do list dot sort by descending. And I want to pass card value dot get int value. So let's get my list of kickers. So here, I actually want to convert this into an in statement. So if it's four, then I can do sum past the card value. And I want the list of kickers. So I can do get kickers of my occurrences. Yeah, need it else. Darn. Yeah, both of them are good names of occurrences. No, let's just be cheesy. Do that. And draw poker kickers useless. Really? Like in like five card draw? I actually don't know that. I always play a uh, Texas Hold'em. Screw it, we'll do it for now. But uh, thanks for the tip. Or we can just omit it altogether. Nah, let's do it for now. We'll add a little bit of complexity. Cool. So now I have a card value, card value option. Cool. So if it's a four of a kind, so here's a good part where I can just do uh, literally the uh, pattern. And all of these, you know, normally you probably want to do um, like this and then 
you pipe your result into that. But uh, the, it really doesn't work well with the... Uh, the pipe doesn't act very well with the active patterns, so that's why I kind of do that. You can probably put it in the let and do that, but whatever. I think this is fine. No community cards, so four. I don't know what you mean by oak. But uh, I can kind of get a oh, four of a kind. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, that is. Yeah, for four of a kind, you don't need a kicker. I agree with that. But if you have a a bunch of high cards, you need kickers. Yeah, I think a four of a kind in, in general, you don't you don't need a kicker. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree with that. Cool. Four of a kind. So we can do. Um, now we can do the opposite and just do let is for of a kind and just do uh, cards. Five cards. Sorted. We can do let occurrences with which we don't need for now but whatever Don't need any of this apparently. It's kind of true. Ideally, you're going to reuse these occurrences for the all the other operations. Um, but for now, screw it. So, this is four of a kind. So if you do like uh, test data, and I think I'm just going to. Make sure all the different operations are like together, like suits, straights, just for fun. Think I'm missing something. I did um I did resort them by value. Oh, I did it for the kickers though. I don't need to do it here. Because when I get the occurrences, I sort them by card value here. No, oh, that's uh, kickers. I sort them by occurrence, that's fine. When I go here, 
if it's a four of a kind, I check the most, the ones that occurs the most, if it's a number four, then that's fine. Yeah, I think that's fine. Um, and then if I do, I need to make a, another test pair of cards. Oh, that's why it didn't work the last time. So let's just do kings, king of diamond, king of spades, let's do king of hearts. And king of clubs. And we probably need to construct that. Four of a kind. And let's just do jack of whatever and king of clubs, king of spades, king of hearts, and King of Diamonds. Cool. And did I call it that? Four of a kind. Four of a kind is not defined. Um, yeah, this should be false. So let's just do... Or I can just pipe it into not. Boom. True and true. Cool. So it's four of a kind. Um, next one would be full house. So let's go here. So is full house. Yeah, I know. Uh, that's for sure. That, that is for certain. Like, uh. Yeah, I know it's kind of it's kind of weird, you know. I don't know what to expect from the viewership. Like, uh, this is just an experiment. Like, people will come in like they don't know the the code base. Like, <laughs> and yeah, I don't know. Kind of having a little fun. Hopefully it's uh, enjoying to watch, but uh, I'm not sure. It's kind of like, you know, the part of me that entertains is definitely not very compatible with the part of me that uh, is writing code, I feel. It's, uh, yeah. I like, in my head, when I was thinking about doing this, I was like, man, it's gonna be so cool, you know, uh, just gonna shoot the shit, uh, just talk casually and stuff like that but then you know I took at, at this monitor and then I have to write code and like actually thinking and not being in the state where you're just like loosey-goosey and whatever so yeah I don't know I think it might be just an occasional thing to do but you never know no like actually like I don't mind I can just if I have work to do that is not like closed source you know, so if I'm not like working some phone like for someone's like contract and they, like they obviously don't want me to like show the code on, on the screen and stuff. You know, I can just turn on the camera and whatever. But it's more for 
you know, it's only going to be a subset of the code I can write. I can just turn on the camera and I'll remind. mind. I think eventually I'm just going to be very used to just be writing there, talking to the camera and stuff. Obviously, it's less fun because, uh, well, you know, it depends. It depends, like, if you write code on your own, whatever, you don't have, like, um, it's good and bad because it's going to be easy to find errors because there's people watching you and stuff like that, but there's a certain level of comfort you have not being in front of a camera. Like, you can just relax and write code and stuff like that, so it's kind of a trade-off. I don't know. I feel like I, if I'm recording something, I might as well stream it. That's what I was said initially. It's because when I when I record something for videos, like I have to talk to a camera anyway. So the difference between talking to a camera with no audience and talking to a camera with audience is kind of small. Uh, no, it's actually huge because if I make a mistake off camera, ah, just edit it out, you know, just whatever. <laughs> no one will ever know, but <laughs> I don't have that luxury when. Uh, there's people watching, so... I don't know. I don't have to take a decision now. Uh, but yeah. So... Uh, with uh, Full House... I can actually do straight up pattern matching, to be honest. So if it's a list that has two elements... And the first element is there three times, and the other one is there two times. And top set, bottom, or set value. I don't know. Do you guys actually feel this is entertaining? Like, would you watch this often? Or was it like, ah, it's just a special thing? Actually, it'd be interesting to know how many people watching have watched my videos before and how many people are just like, uh, they just like tuned in or whatever. They saw my channel in the thingy. Oh, and I'm kind of curious about that. But yeah. So, if this is respected, then it is a full house. So it'll be full house. Some... It's going to be is full house. And I need basically to pass top set value and bottom set value. Otherwise, it is not a full house. You would watch, learn count by, yeah. Yeah, lots of functions to learn. I normally don't do pattern matching that often, but I feel in these cases it's kind of cool. Like this is so practical. Like if you have one case, you know, it's all good. Oh, cool. Well, what was that on on Slack or on uh, YouTube? I have bookmark your channel, but I hadn't seen anything. Okay. Also, I like to see people write F sharp in particular. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. I feel there's a since there's not a lot of people. It, it's not like super popular. So okay, yeah. Um, yeah, since it's not very popular. Uh, it's hard to get an idea of how to do things. And yeah, it's a lot of trial and error. Even like, man, just watching people write code in general, it's kind of weird because you never know what you're going to get. You might, you might be learning bad habits by watching me, like you never know. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the more code you write, the more you get an idea of what's, what's to do and what's not to do. In general, it's kind of a very nuanced thing. But yeah. Uh, cool. So is full house. Let's go ahead and try that. Uh, 
and I can actually use this in a true format. Cool, man. Thanks, uh, half a B. Yeah. I don't know. I'm still making the decision what to do. I'm definitely, uh, past the hump of, uh, you know, just setting everything up and stuff like that. I didn't know what to think, so. It's a bit of a, uh, you know, unexpected thing, but once it started, uh, you know, it's not that, that big of a deal. Cool. Frank Krueger. I don't know. Uh, probably some someone does a uh, Twitch. Yeah, I checked. Uh, I checked the. Uh, oh. So this should work, or this should be true. Yeah, I you know I checked all the other channels and stuff like that. Cool, that works. Um. Oh, he does F-sharp now and then, okay. I was gonna say, I think there's a lot of people that watch game development, or at least there's a lot of people on Twitch that do game development. And, uh, I don't know, I, I, I don't know at what point this is going to be interesting to watch, but, uh, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Boom. And we should probably do a data set that is a full house. So if we take our four of a kind. And remove one king and do uh, jack of hearts. Cool. It's kind of going too fast, I feel. Should probably make it uh, less efficient, you know? <laughs> it's kind of the thing I really like about F-sharp. It's quite, uh, quite powerful. Um, let's do... What's next? It would be the flush. So flush is going to be very easy. It's literally just doing the suited thingy. We already have a suited, suited active pattern. And it's already written, by the way. So, is straight, is suited, we should just call it is, uh, is flush. We're basically done with that. So that's cool. That's a freebie. And then our straight is already done. So it's a freebie also. Then we need to do a free of a kind, which is much like the full house. And it's going to be, is three of a kind. And instead, instead of doing this, we're just going to check if the first thing of the list is going to be that tail. So we're just checking if, is the head element a occurrence of three? And this is the, not the top set, but it's just the set value. Some 
set value, and then we can do get kickers. With the occurrences. But again, the set is not going to be... Yeah, you don't really need the set, but... As... Or as wrapped. I want wrapped, not unwrapped. Yeah. Cool. Bum bum bum. Three of a kind. So if I just do a helper function for is three of a kind. Now I take five cards. There's a lot of repetition here. It's fine. It's fine for now. So, if I do, so here the thing. If I pass full house, it's going to detect it as a, as a three of a kind. But that's kind of fine because here's the actual important function. All of this, this is just for now kind of stuff. We can actually use these data sets on this function later to just make sure everything is correct. Um, cool. So instead of that, let's do test data. Is three of a kind, should be false. And if I pass not that, let's do three of a kind data, which will be much like our full house, but we will change this to uh, something else. Cool. Let's try it out. All right, that works. Next is two pair. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's do full house. It's going to be very similar. Similar. Um, that podcast bridge conflict, uh, tells me something, but, uh, I don't, uh, I don't know. Play Clarum. Okay. And here it should be 2-2, two, two, then 1. We're just going to ignore this last one. Or uh, let's do kicker. Should be two pair. Top set, bottom set. And kicker, I guess. You can do it like that. It's starting to be a lot of copy pasta. These functions are not very necessary. I think they're just for testing for now. It's more of these functions that are going to be necessary. So this is going to disappear. Is to pair. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah, cool. I'll check them out.
So prepare five cards. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, good. So this is definitely a pattern that we can you know, reduce. I'm fine for now. Should probably sort these in order of uh, what kind of hand or the best hand is, but we can do it later. So is to pair. So if we pass the full house, it should fail. Uh, no, that's yeah, that's good. Yeah, never mind. Get mistaken. Um, cool. So let's do two pair. We're almost done, to be honest. What am I doing? Brain freeze. Uh, I'm doing a two pair hand. Okay. Yeah, I actually take like breaks very often, but uh, that's the thing with the the stream is uh, wouldn't be very fun to watch if uh, it just start and stop all the time. Um, full house, ace king. So that's a two pair. That compiles. Let's run everything. Oh, this is should fail because I put uh, not. Yeah, we have a false here, so let's put it to true. Cool. All right, two pairs done. Let's do pair. is pair. So the way I'm going to do this is much like the other one. I'm going to do this. So my top, my actual pair, so it's pair value, has two and then there's the tail and I'm going to do when tail list.map second is all equal to one. Could do it manually. Um, I don't know if this is good or not, but whatever. Let's do this. Um, it's pair. Pair value, and I can get my kickers. This pair again, incredibly copy pasted. Cool. And then I can pass two pair, it should fail. Should fail because it doesn't um, have the condition where all the other hands are kickers. Okay, cool. Well, thanks, uh, Ilte. Is that your word? Uh, your name? Il Tessaidi? I don't know. 
I noticed uh, once I started my YouTube channel, uh, just looking at the people who subscribed, uh, just, uh, how can I say this? Just like the variety of, of like everybody was from like everywhere. It's kind of nuts. It's the first time where, or not the first time, but uh, you know, it's cool that uh, there's like I thought I thought like I was cultured and stuff, but man, there's like so many uh, so many names I could not pronounce, and uh, it's kind of crazy. There's like people all over the place, like from Russia and from uh, from India, from Europe, United States. I checked my demographics, and uh, I think there's surprisingly lot not a lot of people from North America. I don't know. I just saying that because uh, uh, I probably can't pronounce your name. That's why I said that. Uh, so two pair is pair. Wait, why did I do that? Did I test this one? Yeah, I did not test one, so I'll just remove this. Should be a false, cool, that's false. So not, and then I can make a hand that is pair. Should be not. If I do this, and I copy this, and I change one of them. Cool. So I have a pair here, nothing else is the same. This should be a pair. Do they all stream? I know um, Zaid, Seven Sharp Nine, Chris is lack. Uh, no Jeff, I think he does the. Um, what's it called? The uh, Phantomas, I believe. I don't know uh, the other people. That's cool. I didn't. I didn't realize there was that many people um, that would, or at least tried streaming. Cool. True, 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 true. And lastly, we have high card. So, um, let's do that. So, yeah, probably not as frequent. Um, all right, so occurrences. Let's just remove all this. Can also do just do tail when tail and just keep the pattern going to be honest. You can do that. And do get kickers. This should work.
can rename this X. Cool. Do a side card. Alright, so this should not even hit the high card. We have a false, that's good. Not. And then let's do this on test data, which actually should be a high card. Because test data, I I just made sure that it, it wasn't anything. Oh he oh he's the one who did the Fuget. Oh yeah, I actually watched that podcast then. The merch conflict. I I watched that episode. SQLite net. Okay, cool. All cards are reported as kickers. Um, yeah, because they are all kickers, kind of, in high card. If two people have an ace, then they check the next card. If people have ace-king, then they check the next card. So they're technically kind of all... I call them kickers, but, you know, it's... It's just your hand sorted from high to low. And the one that has the highest cards wins, basically. Cool. True, 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 true. That's great. So we actually implemented all the types of hands you can have and how to determine them. So that's pretty fun. It's pretty cool. Uh, we don't need this. And so let's um, commit. Cool. And so now what is to do is to implement and to integrate uh, this. And for now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to remove all the kickers and stuff. Or actually, I can't. I should not. I'm going to go back and just do five uh, card lists. Or uh, I'm just going to, yeah. Just do card list. Just going to retouch these and just make sure uh, it's not overly complicated. Um, and I'll do it. I'll do it as I go, actually. So straight flush. Then it goes to four of a kind. It is four of a kind. Oh, I should probably change all these uh, to be is something. Hmm. Okay, I see what's I see what's going on. I see what's going on. I can create an occurrence. Um, Like, yeah, I can create occurrences and, um, yeah, let's do that. So let occurrences is equal to get occurrences and I need to pass my five card hand. Yeah. And then I can maybe do this, do occurrences and do that. So now I don't care about the actual cards, I just want to check the occurrences. 
So if it's four of a kind, then it's four of a kind. And I need to pass it. Let's just pass the card value. Tuple card value, so. Cool. Um, yeah, I need, yeah, I definitely need this. Oop. Damn. Oh, okay, I'm just going to simplify this. I'm going to screw the kicker. I don't need it. Cool. And next up is the full house. And do top, bottom. This should take this. Yeah, I constructed a type for it. That's not bad. Yeah, I don't need to do this. Screw it. Too many types. That works. Cool. Next up is flush. So I can go here suited. And what does suited give me? Suited should give me um, the suit, I feel. No, the card list is fine, actually. Because, uh, flushes. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah. I feel the same. I definitely feel the same. Um. But, you know, at the end of the day, man, uh. Uh, what can I say? I mean, uh, just trying to gather my words here. I try to be careful and not be too religious about programming languages. Because, uh... I don't know, at the end of the day... Everything can work, but I think it's really cool. So, and I think there's not a lot of videos out there and stuff like that. So that's why I do videos and stuff like that, because I feel it can grow a lot. That's why I do what I do. You know. So instead of a flush, or instead of suited five cards, I'll just grab the suit and then the card values i feel so let suit is equal to cards just grab the first element which will never fail and I can actually just do suit like this, deconstruct it, because I'm going to get past the card. So this is actually a card, but I just want the suit, so I'll do that. And then I'll do the actual card values themselves, so card values is equal to cards and list.map. So card values and then I can build a flush which should be the suit with the cards and the card values 
Oh, I need to um, sort these. So they won't be sorted by default. So I can here, I can... Uh, what did I just do? Okay. Um, I want to sort these. So I can add this active pattern. And they'll be sorted. Cool. So yeah, this tells me it's not good. So I want suit. Don't have to name it. And I want the cards, card values. Cool. <clears throat> After that, it's a straight. So if it's a straight, What does it give me? So a straight flush. I'll, I'll go back here. I feel like the suited should give the suit as well. Yeah, let's do that. Like, is flush should give me a, an option of the suit. Well, is... yeah. So try... let's do try flush here. Actually, I, I don't want to rename. I just want to do try flush here. Let's do that. Let's do this. And... It's kind of... It's, uh, I'm, I'm kind of uh, screwing around on a nuance here. Because this function is fine. But it contains all the logic. And I kind of want to reuse the logic for the other one. So that's why I want to rename this try and it's going to be very stupid. I'm going to do an if here. Yeah, and I'm going to do a stupid thing, but it's fine. So let Yeah, I could do that. Mm, that's kind of true. Sure, let's try that. Count by suit. Yeah, okay. So we don't need this. Let's just rewrite it. So let's do cards. Oh, actually, we should have kept uh, this. It's kind of fun. Count by suit. This will give me... Suit int list, and I basically want to do if... Or, no, I do want a pattern match. Call this suits by count.
Yeah, let's do that. Thanks, uh, Chaz. Yeah, exactly. Cool. And then I can do is flush, which was a valid function to do. Is equal to try flush. Um, option is sum. Which I probably have to compose. Um, okay, so everything still compiles, but this suited, I don't want this, I want uh, basically to map suited and then I do try flush cards and then I want to add option dot map so now it's just the suit that I have if it's a if it's a sum but I want the suit and the cards I think. Maybe I just want the suit. Yeah, I just want the suit. Do I just want the suit? What did I say earlier? Yeah, I just want the suit. So I don't have to uh, do this weird thing. Cool. That should work, I think. So here, now I have this suit here, but I still want to have the pattern match to get the sword cards so I can do and. So I have to add something down there. I have to add uh, five cards to it. So basically, uh, this sorted takes cards, but we have five cards, so I have to deconstruct the five cards. Or, yeah, so this works. Okay, so if it's suited, I get the suit, so I don't need to grab it here. And the cards are already sorted. I just want to grab the values of the cards. Yeah, this works. Cool. Um, hopefully under everybody understands that. Cool, cool, cool. And uh, yes, we're good. Okay. I'm just un untilting my brain there. Uh, cool. So if it's a straight, what do I get if it's a straight? Do I get the sorted cards? I just get the five cards. I don't remember if I sort them. I do not sort them. Okay, that's fine. I can probably sort them though. Screw it. We don't need that. Okay, just do the same thing we did here. V 
very similar to what we just did. Let's just do card list. Card value list. Cool. Can probably space these out a little bit. Nah, that like, kinda sucks. This is fine. If it's on multiple lines, let's put it there. Cool. And this is a straight, so we are at three of a kind. So if it's three of a kind, we don't care about the cards themselves. We just look at the histogram and we do is three of a kind. This should have the set and the kickers. Yes. And with that, let's do three of a kind. And what does it want? Yeah, I can do a type for it, but screw it. Let's just do a tuple. We're all around the tuple train, to be honest, so. We didn't use this either. Let's do set card value and kickers, which is card value list. Cool. Next, we have two pair. It's going to be much like this, but it's going to be top, bot, and kicker to pair. So we can basically do this, and I'll copy it above. Top, card, value, and bot. Some and kicker. Uh, yeah, which is a, another card value. Cool. Second to last will be is the pair. And the kickers, we're going to return a pair. It's going to be the actual pair itself. And it's going to be the kickers, which is a card value list. Cool, this works. And last and at least will be is high card, which is a bunch of cards. Yeah. Sorted. I think they're sorted. I think kicker sorts them. Yeah, okay, they're sorted. Cool. Oh, and so it's, hmm, how can we do this?
Let's just do fail. Let's do impossible. Literally impossible. Oh, what did I do? Cool. All right, so let's convert all of these to uh, these. So we have to bring them down. I mean, we can also do uh, two lists. Yeah, let's do two lists. So let's start at the top, which is Royal Flush. Oh, so I tested Broadway, I never tested uh, Royal Flush. We'll do that now. So, if I have Broadway cards and I solve them, I actually just want to call it solve. This should be equal to. Actually, uh, we should add, be asking a different question. We should be doing, I have uh, five cards that are, this is a straight flush, or sorry, a royal flush. And I want to make sure that it's uh, valid. So, ace hearts, hearts, hearts. I have two spades, let's do ace of spades. Queen of spades. Jack of spades. And let's implement these. So, JJ Jack. Man, by the end of this, we're gonna implement all the cards. I don't think so, but it'd be kind of funny. Not to watch, but you know. Spades. Spades. And I think I'm missing. I have the king. I need the ace, I think. Don't I have the jack? Aha. And what did I call this? I should call this uh, Royal Flush. Now, Royal Flush should take the suit. So I'll change it after. Cool. That works. If I do Broadway, it should not work. Cool. And just to make sure. Yeah, okay. Cool. Oh, actually, what we can do. Is uh, we can do oh okay, so yeah let's let's make a new list here instead of copying everything. So let's we can do a list of tuples, which is um, cards on the left and their expected result on the right. Yeah, we can do that. So, if I do 
five cards dot royal flush cards. It should be a royal flush. And then we can pass these. So we can do double pipe. Pass the dissolve. So double pipe. Uh, Oh yeah, I forgot. So, okay, fun, actual, expected, yeah, I need to map. Uh, map 2. I have to map 2 instead. Okay. I think this works. Come on. Come on, guys, man. Where, where were you on that one, man? Come on, man. Uh, okay. Just, that, that was just me checking if you're sleeping on the keyboard, you know? Uh... Oh, that's a mapping uh, operation. Yeah? It should probably uh, give me the results. Wait. Uh, okay, it thinks it's a function still. Oh, this expects two lists. Okay. Um, so I have to pass it, no, so map 2 won't work, I have to do, okay, I have to do a split them into two lists here, which is, It. Let's just do normal map and do that. This should work. That one. <laughs> uh, yeah, that one time of year can use double but. <laughs> Let's do a list of things that are equal and then, or you know what, we can be extra fancy and do uh, this and then are equal or no. I'm not sure if this is cool or not. but. Probably stupid. Um, mm. Let, let's just try it. Let's just try it. Broadway cards should not be equal to Wheel of Flesh. Oh, wait, I shouldn't be. Okay, I have to do that. And that and that. Cool. Do you do you guys prefer two lists or 
if I do like this, this is kind of easy to understand, I think. This should equal to that. But the argument can be made. Mm. I'm, just trying, I'm just trying to think of different ways. So the, the options I can do a list that is uh, things that I expect to be equal and then another list I expect not to work or I can put them in the same list. I would have liked some simple tests passing. Do you mean like actual unit tests? The the thing is, um, this is like a scripted. So like writing assertions in FSI. Screw it. Yeah, like that. Well, I'm just gonna go ahead and continue this, this then. Um, the Royal Flush, I'm going to pass the suit to it. Because I feel it's kind of relevant. Or maybe no, screw it. Uh, straight Flush, so... A, let's do a royal flush, should not be equal to straight flush. Cool. So, a straight flush, no, straight card should not be equal to straight flush. Yeah, the the issue is uh, I would have to do like uh, solve, put solve everywhere. So that's kind of why I didn't do it like that. And we can go ahead and find straight flush cards. So let's go do the royal flush. And instead of the ace, put the nine. And call it straight flush. Next up is the four of a kind. So we can simply do I have to pass it uh what kind of four of kind it's king. Not gonna rewrite a not unit case for that one because nothing really makes sense uh, as a test case. I feel um, I can do full house. I'm just 
this case, it's probably going to be Queen, uh, King, and Jack. Cool. I'll just do the, all the positive unit tests first. Um, then uh, full send B flush. So we can actually test the royal flush cards are not equal to um, just a flush. And if I want to ignore. Yeah, some more complicated test case. Oh, okay. I can do, um, these are spades, I think. Spades and uh, it needs the card value list. I'll just do it manually to be honest. Ace, King, Queen, Jack, 10. So this would be the sorted collection. So this should not work because it's supposed to be a royal flush, not a flush. Exactly, so it doesn't work because I have this. I can do the same thing with FSI is a great place to extract tests from, but you don't have to do them all at once. Uh true. Yeah, you're you're right. Like I don't have to put them in a list. I think the only advantage of that is I put the solve word once. If I have them in the list, as, as opposed to not having them in the list. So, yeah, I agree. It's kind of uh, overkill, but yeah, you're right. Maybe for the next time, I can just uh, put them straight up, you know. Straight flush is not equal with my straight flush cards. I, okay, I have king through nine. I don't know if I have a hand that's just a flush. So let's do that. Just take the 10 and put a two. Flush should be equal to a flush of, I'll just do, um, actually I, I probably should have done this earlier. Um. Yeah, it's not going to be as simple. Screw that, I'll, I'll just copy it. Queen, Jack, I think I swapped the 10 for a two. So this is pretty hard coded, but screw it. I'll know real quick if it doesn't work.
real quick. Interpret it quick. Cool. Uh, true. And just to make sure... Like... I don't know why, but in my head, I just want to make sure that this doesn't work. Cool, okay. Cool. Okay, that's a flush. So we're on to straights. So let's make sure the straight flush, the royal flush, uh, are not straights. Yeah, okay, so let's check these two. Cool. And we can check that straight cards work. Shut the check of these. Two, three, five, six, four. So two through six. Oh, rip. Yeah, yeah. Um, that should actually probably take two seconds. Let me fix that. Is it my link or uh, studio? Oh, it's this thing. So if I do edit, boom, boom, boom. Nope, not that. I'll fix it later. Screw it. But if you click on F Sharp Tutorials, you'll get it. Um, one sec. Uh, Lay tunes. But thanks for that. I'll, I'll think about it. Uh, where was I? 2 through 6, or 6 through 2 then. So, 6, 5, oh. Don't do the commas, bro. All right. Four. Three. Two. Great. Then we have... Oh, we should probably test the wheel. Just make sure it works. Didn't I already have wheel cards? Yeah, I did. Woo! Um, so this one is Ace, five, four, three, two, uh, two. Isn't it fun when things work? You know, man? Things just work. They just work. It's kind of fun. You know, in F Sharp, it's actually a legitimate occurrence that you write code and it works the first time. And that's something I don't really have with other programming languages, especially if they're dynamic. Uh, okay, so the straight, then we go to three of a kind. So let's make sure the full house is not a three of a kind. And what's the kicker for this one? Check. Oh, Jack Jack. Literally Jack Jack. Cool. And I didn't I didn't run the test yet, but I'll do it in a sec. 
three of a kind should be jack and what? Jack and two. Crap, I keep doing a alt uh, or control thingy instead of control minus. Cool. Let's run this. Cool. Um, next up is two pair. Let's make sure that full house doesn't work. And let's make sure that two pair works. So king, jack, and ace. This should work. Cool. Let's do pair. So let's check if two pair doesn't work. So it would be um, king and then a list of my kickers, which are probably ace, jack, and let's check. Oh, ace, jack, and jack. Kind of feels weird doing these unit tests, but uh, because it's... I, I should probably have function is pair true for here. But at the same time, I want to validate the results for, for these ones. So that's kind of another argument for not having these kinds of framework-like framework lists of tests, you know. Just having your individual tests because each test is kind of different. Cool. And uh, yeah, just want to check if a pair is good. So my pair is going to be pair kings, ace, jack, nine. This should be equal. Cool. And lastly, the hide card. Um, test data is equal to hide card. I have no idea what um, test data has, but let's check it. Uh, Ace King six three two. Ace King six three two. All right, so that's the last one. Boom. Great. Let me just, uh, so I can't believe this uh, all passes, you know? It's gonna switch it up just to see if it fails. Obviously it should. Cool, it's false. It's like this here. Great. So we implemented a bunch of test cases for everything. We're basically sure our algorithm works, or algorithm or our domain and stuff works. Um, cool. So check this in.
cool. Now, uh, what we can do is we can implement the function to test which is a better hand, kind of thing. Um, yeah, so we can do that. I think that's going to be the last thing I'm going to do today. Uh, probably do the rest uh, another time. Um, around four hours. Uh, so yeah, not sure when I'm going to do the other stream. I could, man, uh, I'll do it every free time. Just announce it. Um, I usually say things on Twitter. I might keep posting in the Slack and on my YouTube. This might be the three ways you can kind of get notified if I go live. Obviously, you can follow the channel that you'll all get notifications when I actually go live. But if you want like a little bit of you know, know it in advance and stuff like that. You can check out my YouTube. Uh, apparently, link is broken in um, uh, the Twitch bio. One sec. How fast can I fix this? Probably pretty darn quick. Creator dashboard. Yeah, I'll probably fix it right now. Cool. Save. So if you refresh, uh, the YouTube link is probably works now. But yeah, you can follow me on those things if you want to know when I go live. And, uh, you know, I don't know how often I'll go live. Still kind of taking that decision. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, I'm programming and stuff like that, but there's also... Like, I would be programming offline without the camera, but uh, it's definitely more strenuous to write code live in front of a camera than if I do it chilled out, but there's upside. So maybe, like, I'll do, like, a few bursts of, like, three to four hours here and there. Because I think this was fine. Like, this was very much, but, uh, so yeah. I don't think I'll do, like, eight-hour streams of just... Sitting here writing code. I like to take breaks and stuff like that, so. Maybe like three or four hour sessions. I think that'd be pretty cool. Let me know what you think. Uh, but yeah, thanks for being here, man. It's pretty cool. Pretty first, uh, pretty cool first uh, episode here. So, if you want to compare two hands. Um, what we can do is we can have let. You know compare hands so we have a left hand and a right hand and uh, basically there's gonna be three three outputs it's a great effort for a sharp cool happy to hear that so basically and Poker hand compare is equal to a poker hand, another poker hand, and going to have a like a result or a comparison poker. Would be a good name for this. Because it could be one can win, the other can win, or it can be a draw. Right? So, it's kind of like... Just do a hand result. And, you know, in, in normal poker, there's many different hands, right? There's a, you know, there's a hand per player that didn't fold. So, it's a... Uh, it's not different, but for now, let's just compare two hands. And uh, yeah, so let's do hand result. So uh, type hand result is equal to, it can either be the left. So like this is left, right? So it's kind of an either left of poker hand 
right of poker hand. But there's also a draw, right? There's a split split pot. So both have both have the same value. And it's split. Um so let's go ahead and do that. So I'll do the same thing as I did my solver. So fun. We can actually define this as a poker hand compare. So this is for left, right. So basically, um, it's going to be quite simple. We're going to do compare, which is the base base library to compare two values. And it requires comparison, so you can compare the left and the right. And that will give a number. If the number is less than zero, I think it's the left one. So let's actually scribble it out here. So let's copy the, uh, let's comment this. But if we do royal flush and we do compare, so let's do compare. Well, to be honest, what we can do is even simpler than that. Don't have to do this. Um, we can just do if left is equal to right. So it's literally the same hand, then it's split. And we can do equal, that's the cool thing. It's because these are F sharp types. Uh, and I think I went too far. Oh, I didn't. Since this is an F-sharp type, it checks high to low. Like, so this is the biggest value of anything by default because I defined it last. That's why I defined it from uh, top to bottom. And it's al it also checks if you have two hands, and I'll demonstrate it afterwards. If I have two hands, let's say... Um, I have two pairs, so one person has a pair, the other person has a pair. We can, can compare, and without having any code written, we can compare those values. Because it's the, the, the comparison is all built in by default. With the order like this, and it uses the default compares of the, each of the types. So let's say an integer has a default compare of, you know, the bigger value would be bigger than the smaller value kind of thing. And the same thing is true with all of these types. And it's all by default code generated for you. So if left is equal to right, then I split. Else if left, if left is bigger than right, then uh, it shouldn't be there. Wait, I think it's elif. <laughs> yeah, that's how little I actually do if else is in the... Uh, yeah, sure. And left wins with the left hand. And then else it's... Right wins. With the right hand. Cool. That works. And so I can come here and I can do um, compare hands. So I can do royal flush and straight flush. Should be equal to uh, left royal flush. I actually want straight flush here. Damn. Yeah, the big backwards pipe controversy. I love using the backwards pipe, man. <laughs> and I never apologize for it. Um, yeah. But I get, no, I get like, I think it's a good rule to tell people don't use it. It's just that, you know, if I have some 
one plus one. Like, you know, I think they would recommend to do this, but I think it's much more valuable to have this sum on the left, like that. Just to, you know what the, the actual tape heights. Brackets? Do you mean like parentheses? Like, like this? Is that what it's called in English? Like, uh, I'm I'm French, so some of these words I don't know, but I... I, I felt a bracket was this thing. I don't know. Okay, so... I asked two questions, so if you said yes, I'm kind of confused, but... Yeah, exactly. Cool, anyway. So, if I do this, it should work. Okay. But what are these called? Are these are these parentheses? Like I'm, I'm I like I'm pretty sure, but if it's not a parentheses, I'm truly screwed, man. <laughs> um Okay, cool. Man, I was about to have a heart attack. Cool. It's like my life would be like, what would my life be, you know, if I if I didn't know what this was called and I'm a programmer, you anyway. know. Uh, cool. So if I have a royal flush, it should be a split. True. Cool. And uh, let's do the opposite. Should be right royal flush. Cool. And if I do, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I just totally, totally, uh, you don't really know what they are called. You don't need what they're called to use them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that happens a lot. You know when you learn a skill set, and um, you don't know anything about it, but you like learned it a lot. Then you uh, talk to someone who's like learned that skill set, but very like structured and is more in the, uh, you know, it's kind of learned with coaches and courses and and whatever. Like a lot of the times, you just have your own you. Like you, you create your own definitions for things and own terms and stuff. Later to find out that the thing that sounded really complicated is like exactly the same thing that you were kind of just discovering by yourself, but you just never knew what it was called. Anyway, it's kind of interesting. Um, and so I think one of the last test cases I want to do is just like comparing uh, a pair. So let's say I have a pair here. Oh, here's another cool. Uh, so if I do nine, uh, or I do seven here. So here I can. double pipe into my compare hands um wait what this should work maybe it just needed some uh parentheses yeah so if i compare hands like this left should win oh this kind of looks weird though now Yeah, that, that's kind of weird. Let's let's just not. So left wins, and the reason why it wins is because um, of this kicker right here. Uh, 
Um, how can I do this? I guess I could do a... This, I guess. Oh, now we're getting into ugly territory, man. I guess I have to do this. Oh, um... Boom. Solved. Yeah. Now we're getting really heavy with the, uh... Good. Yeah, so that's basically uh, how it works with the comparison. Wrote a lot of Emacs Lisp in the 80s. Man, uh, there's a lot of uh, very experienced people watching. Like, uh, there's other people earlier, don't know who was there, who was saying uh, um, that uh, he was born in the 80s as well. Is that the demographic on, on Twitch for programming? I don't know. It's kind of interesting. I don't think people who uh, are, are new to programming watch people program. I don't know. I don't know. Cool. But yeah, that's. I think that's what I want to do for today. I think it was a very productive first stream. And, um... Yeah, I'm starting to think that maybe I should just move on to, uh... Yeah, is, is that what I said? I said experience, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure I did. Anyway, uh, cool. So to recap, what we did, and uh, one thing I like doing is, uh, one thing that we don't often talk about in F-sharp, but it's better to read code from bottom to top. Um, because at the top, you're going from small parts progressively to bigger parts that compose the, the previous parts. So it's better just to go down, even though these are kind of test cases, so I'm just going to skim over them. But basically we're trying to solve a poker hand, and uh, what we did is we defined a bunch of active patterns to determine what kinds of hands we have. And so that's what we did here. We did the occurrences, which are basically, uh, you know, each card, how many times they were present. And stuff like that. So Broadway, Sorted, blah blah blah. So that was basically what we did, and then we determined what's a poker hand. And uh, we probably have a bunch of stuff we don't need here. Like all of these. Yep. And then we just defined a bunch of cards. So yeah, it's pretty simple to be honest. We have like a core core logic done in about uh, four and a half hours. Imagine like, uh, you know, half a work day, you go to work and say, hey man, uh, I need you to do an engine for poker. Like, I don't think people normally call four hours for that. Not and that's like not to uh, to my own harm, but I mean it's just the I feel that like the language is very productive. But I don't know, maybe it can be a bit short in other languages. I don't know. Just off the top of my head, I w I would not say uh, four hours. Cool. So a readable engine, yeah, it is a. Uh, it's pretty easy to read. If you know the language. Of course, this is kind of, man, there's so many things going on. Double pipe, pipe into point free version of left pipe. You know, it's not the best, but yeah. So, I'm going to push this. Um, do I know high low split games? I have never played. Uh, I think I know how to play Omaha. Um, I said I think. I don't know. I, I usually just stick to Texas Hold'em. But yeah. So, yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoy it, um, you can follow the channel, I feel. 
uh, that'll just like notify you if I go live. And if you're on Twitter, just if you follow me on Twitter, I'll post out like a days in advance. I feel uh, if I come in live, and then there's the YouTube if you want to learn more. That last statement would burn the <laughs> sharp. Um, to be no, to be honest, uh, I think like if I do this. Like this part is fine. Uh, I I was on a call with Don Simon and he said he said that the double pipe is a very good way to determine. Um, yeah, if you do the yeah, probably. Uh, you can also have yeah. Anyway, yeah, he loves the double pipes, so that's fine. This. I feel like I'm not always a, you know, point freeze is, is, is not that bad, especially if it's equal plus, like very simple things like that. I think it's fine. It's just maybe this that would be arguable. Like, you know, you probably want to put this in a in a value and put it there. Um, you know, but still, I think it's fine. It's not ideal, but it's it's okay. Anyway. So, chat, thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, if you follow the thingies, if you want to watch this again, if not, it's all good, it's all good, I get it, man, it's all good, it's all good, but if you do, um, yeah, thanks a lot for watching, I think it's pretty cool, and uh, yeah, I'll see you around, so, bye bye Yeah, it does look a little bit crazy, anyway, so, cool. This is going to be a very abrupt end, so uh, peace out.